Hello viewers, as part of the CTA project, I'm here today at the East Municipal Hospital to interview a frontliner. Good afternoon, sir. Please watch your name. Good afternoon. My name is Matthias Ansan. And uh, as part of the frontline health workers who started COVID right from the initial state. Um, sir, please, how was your experiences as a frontline? Uh, well, uh, for now, let me say it's fun. But from the start, it was very scary. Yeah, very, very scary. I mean, um, when we started the COVID, uh, then it was that was last year, and everybody was scared. So we started a training, just in anticipating for a case that may come to the country Ghana, and then we within the that same week uh, we were told that a case we may be having a case within that week. So we came for training, and then. Uh, I went home. In the evening, I was called that we already have a first case. But uh, doctors, nurses, everybody is running away. But uh, they trust some of us, our enthusiasm and how we handle our cases. Yeah, I was called that I should come and then uh, take care of the case. It was very clear, but it was already late, so they asked me to come in the morning. But the patient was stable, everything was fine. So in the morning when I came, yeah, it was very scary, very, but I just managed to um, put myself together in a way and then do uh, go ahead and then take care of the patient. But um, God being so good, everything was fine. The patient also got well. And then when the time comes, those days we do the two weeks, 14 days. So after was when he was checked, uh, he was fine and he was discharged. That, that was it. that was how it started. Please, you spoke about some training program. Was it the government that provided that training for you? And then since then, has he been providing continual training for the workers in your facility on how to treat and manage COVID nineteen patients? Well, um, the training then actually started. The hospital was a new hospital, so the hospital was training staffs to start the hospital uh, at a go. Then within that same time, COVID also broke up. So the training along the line changed so that we'll be able to take care of uh, infectious diseases. So formerly we were just doing the normal training and, in, and then the orientation and how to start the hospital afresh. Then the COVID came, so we sh the training changed. Then we have to get ready and how to manage uh, the COVID. It was at a very short notice but uh, it was just a directive from government and then the hospital management took it upon themselves to change their training and then they brought in uh, well experienced uh, people uh, who came in to assist us it was very short but um, those of us who were able to capture things very quick they intend they they decided to use us to start managing the case i believe um Ga east municipal hospital is like the center of COVID 19. do you think the facility has enough medical supplies to um, manage the COVID-19 numbers that comes in? Well, uh, for medical supplies, day in day, we, I can't say we have enough because day in day, we use, that, we use them. So we always need, yes, we always need as many as we can get to manage cases that we, we, we have. Can you share some insights of how um, health professionals managed the pandemic? Well, um, this case, especially COVID-19, it has to do with teamwork. Teamwork with good motivation. Yeah, um, motivation with, I mean, all rounds of motivation. Verbally, uh, trying to encourage each other. It's a teamwork because um, one team or one team move from one place to the other and ends there and another team takes it from there. And when any of the team members uh, should fall out it can create a whole issue to the whole uh, uh, team so what happened is for example before you go in to see a patient um, you have to wear the PPEs and then someone must watch you how you don done and then your your, your your dressing everything must be uh, must go in accordance with a uh, protocol now when any of you doing that misses a uh, step it can cause havoc and then when you go in and you come back even when you are back you want to doff even in fact that is even more dangerous when you are doffing that is taking off 
what you wore in. Now, someone must also be there to guide you whilst you are even removing it. It is a whole lot of process. So as you do it, the person must be watching you and be telling you, go here, go here, go here, before you remove everything and then you clean up yourself, wash, then straight to the bathroom and then bath and then change back. Um, did the government provide direct support to ensure that your facility is adequately equipped to manage the COVID-19 pandemic? From the start, um, it was mainly by benevolent societies. And uh, Ghanaians really did well uh, from the start. Corporate bodies, uh, churches, and individuals, they trooped in quickly with their donations. And that really, really helped. For, for, for some of us health workers, usually we run the the three shifts but when COVID started we have to run only two shifts you come from morning till evening and then uh, the night people come and then they also end in the morning and when it started that way those of us who started we don't go home like we're not allowed to go home anymore because of how the case is if not going home and back can spread the disease as well so we were kept here so benevolent societies help us they brought us food uh and water and all that then later on government also uh, uh, came in and then gave us uh, the things that we need were there some front liners in your facility that contracted COVID-19 at the initial stage um, people did not but later on when the lockdown was over yes people uh, got infected yeah, but they were managed well and then they all got well were they compensated well, uh, they were part of uh, pa- a part of the government's plan to compensate the, the insurance that was made for government. So, I believe by now they are re- they should be in the process of being compensated. Um, I think one of the challenges government is facing right now is to achieve herd immunity. Do you think Ghana has the capacity and mechanism in place to receive and provide COVID nineteen vaccines for all Ghanaians? For now, uh, in my opinion, I don't think the government is having that money to be able to procure the, the, the vaccines where majority will be able to take so that we can provide the herd immunity. You know, for you to provide herd immunity, you need a percentage of the population to, get vac- to be vaccinated. And when that percentage of number of people get vaccinated, then you can be sure that then the rest will get the herd immunity. But if the lesser percentage should be vaccinated, uh, it's very difficult to get the herd immunity. I think you guys took a very bold step. Like being a frontliner, I have <laughs> never been there before, but I think it's a very scary thing to do because, like, you are seeing death and then you are approaching it. But Ghana is really proud of you and your colleagues who devoted your lives to save patients. You really did well. Thank you very much. We are proud too.